what it's like to go to a school with no homework and no teachers? I went all the way to Massachusetts to find out. <laughs> Do you sometimes wonder if AI is taking over the world? Well, we talked to an expert who says you don't need to worry about that. <laughs> and stick around for an exclusive interview with Charlie D'Amelio. <laughs> Taylor, let's get into school for a minute. It has been crazy over the past couple of years. And people have been having a lot of questions about education and schooling. So today, I brought in some middle schoolers to the Nick News office to show them a piece I've been working on about a pretty interesting school. Let's we'll see what they gotta say. Are we ready to see? Yeah. Okay. So where are the teachers? No teachers, we call them staff members. What about your grades? No grades. Okay, what about homework? No homework. Wow, that's crazy. This is Sunbury Valley School, a private school just outside of Austin. You've probably heard of schools like it, alternative schools with no homework or grades, but Sunbury Valley takes it to the next level with no classes or even teachers. Well, here's the thing. Why do you need a school? That's Daniel Greenberg, who was a physics professor that created a whole new way of doing school back in 1968 when he and his friends founded the Sudbury School. Now, there are dozens of schools following the Sudbury model across the U.S. and in other countries. The atmosphere in the school doesn't squelch that desire to learn, to be curious, to make order out of whatever it is that moves them. But what happens at a school where kids do whatever it is that moves them? I'm here to find out. Nine-year-old Brielle gives me a tour. Uh, so. Okay. Do you want to start with Simon? Yeah, let's go. Okay, I'm right here, I believe. This is the check-in list, and checking in and out is the only responsibility that students here have every single day. But if you don't, I'm signing in or forget you or whatever, you go with the pink sheet of death. The pink sheet of death? And then you get a dollar fine. Oh, wow, so you have to pay a dollar if yeah. you want to check in. Mm -hmm. but once they've checked in, they're free to go wherever they want on the campus and do whatever they want. This is the plan. So there's a mirror, which a lot of people do their makeup in, actually. One of my friends, Noah, she is, like, so good at makeup. She's 16. She'll just sit here and do it for, like, 10, 20 minutes. My name is Noah Lee, and I've been here for, I think, six years. What was your first impression of the school? I was, I was afraid. I was, I didn't know what to do because there was no one like telling me to do anything. At this school, you can do whatever you want with your time. It would be like showing up to school and not having math or social studies or English class. You're literally on your own. This is the art room. There's paintings or drawing or something. That's beautiful. Students here are hard at work doing all kinds of art like knitting and pottery. Anna, who started attending Sudbury after trying different kinds of schools, is working on a tiny house made of cardboard scraps. This is like next level That's Minecraft. Cool. So, what do you think you learn from doing this every day? Well, I mean, I think I want to be an architect, so I don't know. I like to build building stuff. As I watch them turn tiny scraps of cardboard, I wonder why parents would send their kids to a place that looks more like a hangout spot than a school. I was going to this school, and... Then I went to public school, and that was that was the worst I've ever felt in my life. I did not feel connected to anybody. What wasn't working in those other schools? Uh, well, the teachers, I mean, they treat me like I'm an idiot, and I'm not. We came from Russia exactly for this school. Our parents want to us to understand what we like to do. I spent on 3D modeling like five hours a day. And I understood that I want to do 3D modeling with this school because it led me to do stuff I want to. Many of these kids seem to really enjoy the freedom they have here. But what are they learning? Now parents may be watching this and they see the freedom in this school and they may think this school might set my child up for failure. What do you think? Yeah, a lot of people do think that because they see the school and they see, oh, there's no classes. How is my kid going to learn, like, history or, like, trigonometry or calculus and stuff like that? Obviously, I think things that are important are, like, you know, multiplication and addition and stuff like that. And you can get that easily from the school. How did you, how did you learn multiplication? Oh, well, my parents taught me and stuff like that. So that was more of, like, a personal thing. Uh, okay. 
The thing is, because Sudbury has no testing or standards, we have no idea how these kids measure up in fundamental things like math and reading. So how do Sudbury kids do when they leave this place? We don't just have artists and musicians and dancers. We've had people really of all walks of life that go out and find success. To graduate, you need to make the case to a diploma committee that you're ready for the real world. The committee is a group of people that went to Sudbury and schools like it, and they vote to decide if you're ready to go. There's no standards on how the committee judges this, so it's mostly based on their opinion. Are y'all about to go to college? Um, I'm gonna graduate this year, hopefully, yeah, but I don't, I'm don't. i not sure about college yet. I, I'm not personally going to college, at least not yet. When I asked about life after graduation, the staff told me that the number of suburb kids that go to college is on par with kids from public schools. According to data from 2011, that means that about 40% will go, which is typically lower than kids from other private schools. My sister, she tried the school out too, and she just felt like it was like a little too much freedom, you know? Like she wanted people to be telling her what to do. As someone who came from public school, I still have a lot of questions about how the Sudbury Valley School prepares its students for life. But after spending some time here, I've learned these kids have found a place that supports how they want to live. I wouldn't be the person I am today if I didn't go here. Okay, first thoughts. What do you think of Sudbury Valley School? It's really interesting. I've never seen anything like it. I thought it was... I, I just thought it was a good place for kids to go if they were, like, struggling with actually, like, a, a real public school with the teachers, the students getting bullied or any of that. There's too much freedom, I think, and I get it that they can have a lot of creativity in that school grade, but there are, like, certain skills you need to know and have teachers, the teachers have to teach you. In the video, he um, stated that his parents taught him how to do multiplication. Isn't that the teacher's jobs? Lila, would you go to a school like this? No. No. Because I just love having teachers there to help you. Okay. Would you go to a school like this? No. I mean, it seems cool and all, but, like, there's a few things that I feel like are definitely off with it that should be there. Yeah, like, you can play video games for seven hours and no one will stop you. Katie, would you go to a school like this? I don't know. It's just because, like, there is, like, a, the tiny of too much freedom, but I do like how they can actually do things that they like in there. Sometimes you'll do your makeup in class in a public school, and you're like, this is not beauty class. Yeah. Well, thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. We found schools in some of the wildest locations in the world. Seriously, you're not going to believe these. What if your school was in a remote location inside of a cave? No, I'm not talking about a superhero secret lair. It's the Dungeon Cave School. It could fit 186 students, have a full basketball court, and apparently a lot of lizards. It's also probably the only school in the world where you can use the excuse that a bat ate your homework. Don't feel like riding the bus all the way to and from school. But what if they brought the school to you? In Gujarat, that's exactly what they did. And their school bus classroom is on a mission to bring education to everyone in the rural area. Speaking of rural areas, if you ever wanted to spend your school day in a forest, if school in a treehouse is for you. They took remote learning very literally. But maybe the best part is you'd never have to come inside after recess if your school isn't inside. And this next one takes learning to new heights. No, seriously, it's a school in the clouds. Students in Sichuan literally climb a mountain to get to class. And the path to school gets pretty precarious at certain points with drops of thousands of feet. Goes to show no matter the circumstance, people find genius ways to make education possible. And we love so I'm wondering what's next. Are they going to put a school on the moon? No, the bus will probably take too long. Alexa, stop. What's up? But now I'm going to go get ready to go to school. I'm make my brother some cereal because he's hungry. He's hungry now. Okay, yeah. Um, that's good. Yeah. We're going to school today. This is my dad. This is my brother. <laughs> the walk is really not that bad. I hope we all miss my brush. Bye, Tito. I am not the 
me to stay in school, but there are a couple things that push me through, like bands. But I honestly love my history class so much. It's just my worst subject. Because I'm dyslexic, I confuse a bunch of numbers and letters and all of that. And history has a bunch of dates. What I like most about school is our weekly science team meetups. Something I don't look forward to is math homework. When the kid comes home from school, they are right there for eight hours. Eight hours. When we come home, our brains are done. Our brains are fried. We cannot physically and mentally do any more school work. Oh my gosh. I pressed this. And then it all deleted. No, no way, no way. 405 pages. That's crazy. So, my family's from Colombia, and my mom went to an all girls school. She learned how to sew, how to take care of a baby, paying your taxes, how to be safe in the world, or how to grow your money, how to save your money. I wish they did that here. You learned so many more life lessons. Most of us say, Oh, you never went through anything. How would you know that? Kids had to go through stuff. Teenagers had to go through stuff. How was school? It was kind of stressful. I don't know. School has just been feeling weird. I'm getting bullied really bad. Yeah, I raised my hand for a question. Someone was like, oh, you're dumb. Like, how did you get that wrong? Oh, look, it's a girl who can't even read and stuff like that. Because I skipped kindergarten, I have a lot of trouble making friends because age gap. They would text me horrible things, and that was actually my birthday. Um, but, yeah. If I could change anything, I would change these environments that kids growing up on now. Like, the gun violence in the environments, the trauma. I would let them know that this pain is just temporary. Look, guys. <laughs> three months of eighth grade and then I go to high school which is very nerve-wracking and I honestly have a bucket of toys I hide under my bed. <laughs> that golden color! This that golden color! It's not giving up, just always striving. I like that about me. What's up? Show me my alarm. Bye, Bob! Come on. Come on. today. 
with a Play-Doh Magical Mixer playset. Adult assembly required. Transformers Earth Spark returns with brand new episodes. That's open, you show up. Just like old times. Rolling out new parts. At last, we meet again. It does not need to be like this. Then bring the heat. Greylock! You got this! Something's wrong! If I wore shorts, I'd have to go change them. Transformers Earth Spark. Stream new episodes exclusively on Paramount Plus. Epic Trucks, Epic Stocks, Monster Jam. Can you conquer the big air giants? Try to reach the top. Move, so close. Blast in a big air. Boom! You hit the top and blast at the fireworks. Monster Jam Trucks win. No Monster Jam Big Air Challenge. Other trucks he took separately. Sounding answers to questions like write me an essay about Alexander Hamilton or about a recipe from mac and cheese. So when we talk about AI, are we talking about computers taking over humanity? Shouldn't we be scared? Look, AI is fine when it's vacuuming my floors, but when robots learn to dance and chatbots are talking to me like they're my friend, miss me with all that. AI is made by humans, and humans aren't perfect. Therefore, AI isn't gonna be perfect, which can lead to huge problems like bias and misinformation. Even with its shortcomings, AI is probably gonna change our lives. Forever. Modern AI is basically computer code that can teach itself. The more you show it, the more it learns. I just wish there was someone that could help me convince you to use this. I don't want to be convinced. I like it the old-fashioned way. Whoa. What? Who are you? Hey, I'm changes with Nick News. Who are you? I'm Sinead Bovell. I'm a futurist and tech educator on things like AI. AI is really exciting right now. One thing I always like to say is the best thing we can do about the future is prepare for it. And that's really true when it comes to artificial intelligence. We've actually been using it for a really long time. If you use Amazon Alexa or Siri, if you search on Google for anything, all of that is really powered by artificial intelligence. I think what's changed is that now we straight up ask artificial intelligence to write us things, make us music, make us images. It can be really cool having an AI system help you out with that. Hey, can you write me a 250-word essay on the element silicon? Isn't that cheating? Amazing. Miss Gibson will never know. Never know what? Uh, hi, Miss Gibson. Here's that essay. I don't like it when my students use AI bots or any kind of cheating method. However, I do think AI is something that is here to stay. And I think we have to start using it as a tool in our classrooms. How do you see AI and ChatGPT being most useful in a classroom? I think it really helps teachers create in more individualized lesson plans, which specifically helps students who have learning deficiencies. I think it helps higher level students be able to push their writing just like calculators helped mathematicians push their math. There is so much to consider. I don't even know what to think anymore. I can help. Would you like to play a game? Sure. <laughs> Welcome to AI or ANA. I'll present you something involving artificial intelligence and you say I if you're down with it or nay if you're not. Ready? Go. AI generated art. AI. Apps like Midjury and Stable Diffusion are creating art that's never been seen before. A nay. Those images are generated from people's stolen artwork without their permission. If your work so much as exists online, it will be found and it will be used in AI art. And we as artists are not being protected. AI chat box. AI. It's my second brain. A nay. It makes cheating way too easy. It'll give you bad information and it's creepy. Hey, I'm right here. Why is it talking like a person? Tages, this thing is going to take our jobs. But think about how much time it can save us. The truth is, you're both right about all of these topics. 
AI is a complex, rapidly evolving area, and it's made some massive strides in these past couple of years. It's quite astonishing. At the end of the day, it's here to stay, and it's going to impact our lives in profound ways. Okay, I want to go live with Shanine. She just gets me. Can someone box me up and ship me to New York City, please? Well, goodbye then, little buddy. They grow up so fast. Well, we should break some news. I mean, we do have a lot of work, and maybe a robot wasn't the worst idea. <laughs> Never mind. Hello, my name is Benjamin Dilmeda, and I have three discoveries inside this bag that may change the world by the time you grow up. First up, it appears that teleportation is possible. Scientists teleported a photon from Earth to a satellite 500 kilometers away. Experts say that this is the first step in building a quantum internet that can transmit information at the speed of light. Well, this sucks. Researchers in London actually discovered a way to edit the genes of a male mosquito so his offspring couldn't bite or lay any eggs. So then they tried putting this self-destructing mosquito into a colony in a lab. And after eight generations, there were no females left to reproduce. So the population died out. Am I supposed to feel bad because I don't? And finally... You may never have to grow up. Researchers from the Harvard Medical School have found a way to stop and even reverse aging in rodents. <laughs> Could this mean we've discovered immortality? I don't know. The scientists might, but I don't. But th that's pretty crazy, though. And that's the news. Separately. At Olive 
important, nobody loves Alfredo quite like we do. We make it from scratch, so you can enjoy it poured, twirled, or dipped. With our one-of-a-kind Alfredo, the possibilities are endless. this past weekend. We broke the national record for our eight-year-old relay. All right, so uh, you used to train your daughter when she started at the age of three. Right, go, go, go. I noticed that I was running fast when I was three years old. I didn't even know I was running fast until I seen everybody behind. My mom told me about Swan Jordan, and she's the queen of track. Now Shakari is the queen of Shrek, so my biggest inspiration is Fojo and Shakari Richardson. My family has kept me grounded. Without my grandmother, that would be Del Shakari Richardson. So my grandma passed away, and I really missed her. And before I started running, I always blow a kiss to my grandma, and she always catches, and she put it all into her heart, into her spirit. So we're going to bring her today. It's a new trainer. Um, we're going to um, Sanders Fit. It's a nice gym. So we're going to get there. We're going to have a good work ethic. You ain't new to this. I'm going to crank it up. I take no days off. That means, like, I practice every day nonstop. Yeah, there we go. Jack your speed up. Let's go. Be easy. Good job. Dakota can be an Olivia. She works hard. She has fun at practice. And she listens to her coaches. That's the magic potion. Go, speed up. When I run fast, I feel excited and nervous, like both together. At the end, it feels like you're gonna pass out, but you're still excited. So I never stop track. Every day I go to practice. Dakota will be one of the fastest people that ever run on this planet. I give it all my all, so that's how I know I can be the fastest girl in the country. would you like to visit? I want to go all throughout Europe and just see all the amazing places that I can go to. What language would you like to speak? Italian, because, you know, I'm Italian. I always wanted to learn, but I've never actually gotten to do it. What superpower would you want? Teleportation. So I can do all the things I want to do without having to worry about travel time. What would you do as president for a day? I would not know what to do if I was president. That is a lot of responsibility, and I do not think that I'm responsible enough for that. What do you do when you're stressed? I take a break, de-stress, be by myself for a second, you know, just collect myself until I'm ready to walk back out and be me. What advice would you give your nine-year-old self? Just go with it. Everything works out, and you're going to be fine. Who are the most important people in your life? I would say my family is definitely top of the list. I'm very close to my family, and I love doing everything with them. What are you most proud of? I think my proud 
proudest moment right now is probably co-hosting the Kids' Choice Awards. That's a very proud moment for myself. Watch this.